Hey everyone, it's Herc Magnus here and welcome to my how to research domains for your PBN video series. So at first I was going to shoot one video, but the more I got into detail, the more I realized that this is actually a series of videos. So the first part of the video is going to be this one today. It'll be the shortest one and it's called the four phases of an expired domain name. Uh, which is important. It's important to know how a domain name goes from being registered all the way to being expired because at certain different levels in within these phases you can register these domain names so it's important to know things about pricing, indexing and stuff like that. So I'm going to cover that in today's video. In part two of three I'm actually going to go over the research process that I use for these domains in different phases and when it's okay to register a domain versus when it's not okay to register a domain. We're going to look at things like whether it's indexed, whether it's penalized, uh, what the history of the domain was and stuff like that. In the final uh, video of this series what I'm actually going to go do is show you some really cool manual research um, methods that I use to find PBNs um, because I think it's important for you guys to know how to do it manually and know how to research these domain names. And once you have that down, then there's a ton of great services out there uh, that you can go where they're going to sell you domains. They do all the research for you and then sell you, sell you those domains at a little bit of a premium, but at least you'll understand the research process for yourself and be very confident in what you're buying and you'll be able to save a bit of time. So getting into this one. And we're going to go into the four phases of an expired domain name. So the first phase is basically renewal. Whenever you own a domain name and the registration expires or you don't pay your renewal fee, you're in, you go into a renewal state where each register has a specific set amount of time um, that you have to renew that domain name. If you don't renew it, you go into a final redemption phase. So this is phase two. In redemption phase, you have typically anywhere from 14 to 30 days. It's a final, final notice from your registrar saying if you do not pay by this date, you will lose the domain name out of your registrar. So that's the redemption phase. Now, the redemption and the pre-release phase kind of coincide because while domains are in the redemption phase, they start popping up at certain registrars like Namejet or Snap Names. And what those are is your domain is kind of in a pre-release phase where it's still owned by the registrar and the person at the registrar, but it's also in pre-release. It's about to be released out to the public. So in the pre-release phase of a domain name's life, there's a couple ways you can actually acquire the domain name. Uh, first thing you would have to do is basically put a, what's called a back order on this domain name, meaning you put in a certain amount of money depending on the registrar you're with to say, yes, I'm interested in buying this domain name if it becomes available, if someone doesn't renew it in that phase two redemption period. So if you are the only one that actually puts in a back order for that domain name, you will win it by default and that's what's called drop catch domain name. You're the only one that put in the, the, the order so you actually catch the domain name. Now in the drop catch phase, there's actually two places you can go to drop catch domain names and they have different kind of advantages. Uh, places like Namejet and Snap Names, your typical drop catch or back order fee is usually around $69. And what that does is it guarantees that you'll either A, win the domain if no one else puts a back order on it, or B, if someone else did put a back order on it, you're guaranteed to get into what's called an auction now. And in an auction, what happens is all the people who have put in a back order for that domain get to have a lovely fight with each other and outbid each other until one winner finally pays a ridiculously overpriced um, amount for the domain. I do not like getting into auctions, but for the right domain, I will get into an auction, but they're dangerous because you can become emotionally involved in winning the auction. You can overpay for the domains. So it's it's my least favorite um way of buying a domain name is in auction. I typically like to win them with a drop catch, which brings me into Phoenix. Actually, if you go to phoenix.com, you can back order a domain name for only $19.95. Now, the difference between Phoenix and Namejet is Phoenix, because it costs less, um, the reason it costs less is that you will only win a domain name at Phoenix if nobody else put in a back order for it at any other registrar. 
So that means in the entire world, you're the only person that put in that back order. And if you happen to be that person and you back ordered it with Phoenix, you'll win that domain for $19.95, which is pretty, pretty cheap. And I do win a lot of domains using Phoenix. The danger of using Phoenix is that if someone else anywhere on any other registrar does put in a back order, you are automatically eliminated from getting the domain and you don't get into the auction with Phoenix. So putting um, a back order into Namejet kind of is like an insurance plan saying I like the domain so much that I want to be guaranteed into the auction and you pay an extra, what, 40 bucks for that or 50 bucks. Whereas with Phoenix, you're saying, look, I only want to catch this domain if no one else puts a back order on it. And for that, you only have to pay $20. So there's, there's a couple different scenarios there and they're both important to, uh, to understand what's going on. Just remember that drop catch is basically the, the process of putting in a back order. And if you're the only one that put in the back order, you win the domain. If you did it on Namejet, you win it for 70 bucks. If you did it with Phoenix, you win it for 1995. However, if you put in the back order and someone else orders the domain or back orders the domain as well, with Namejet, you're guaranteed to go in and to an auction with that person or the group of people that back ordered. Whereas with Phoenix, you do not get into an auction and you do not win the domain. So you have to kind of choose each domain. If it's a really, really good domain and you want to guarantee that you have a shot at auction, order it with Namejet. If you don't really care if you win it or not, uh, just order it with Phoenix. So the final phase of, do, of a domain is if you go through renewal, redemption, and then it goes into pre-release and nobody puts a back order on it, then and it doesn't go to auction and there's just been no bids it releases itself back into the public pool of expired domain names that can be picked up on any registrar for anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars domain names that are expired do get de-indexed from google rather quickly but not all expired domains um, are necessarily bad just because they're de-indexed. So it's important to understand when a domain name is de-indexed because it's expired, it may appear at first glance that it's a de-indexed domain and most people don't wanna touch them. But if it's a recently expired domain name, um, then there is still merit into registering it with Google in the right situation because you can get those re-indexed really, really quickly. And that is the information I am going to cover in video number two of how to buy a PBN domain name and research it properly. So hopefully you got some good information about the four phases of an expired domain name and I will see you guys in video two.